What's up, everybody? My name is Tucker. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some way too early predictions for the 2022 NBA trade deadline. If you enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like rating on it and subscribe to the channel as well for more content just like this every single day. With those things said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've got five predictions that I'm taking a look at here because this is going to be, it's quite frankly, it's going to be a unpredictable trade deadline, but I wanted to do my best. Obviously, we're still a handful of weeks away from the actual deadline, but based off rumors, reports, and just kind of my own gut instinct here, this is where I'm at with the deadline. We begin with an easy one. I'm going to give myself an easy one to get started here, and it's Damian Lillard. The prediction here is that Dame stays in Portland. I don't know what's going to happen with the rest of Portland's roster. I wouldn't be shocked if they made a move here or there. If they move CJ McCollum, they tried to make a move for Ben Simmons. None of that would surprise me. But one thing I do know is that Damian Lillard is still going to be a member of the Portland Trailblazers once this trade deadline passes. He's basically said it. The organization has basically said it. There's been no indication that we've been given that Dame will be on the move anytime soon. And so, like I said, I'm going to lob that one up for myself. Give me an easy one. And we're going to move on to the next one. The Golden State Warriors, I think, are a very, very interesting trade deadline team because there's there's two very clear paths that they can go on they can stick with this group hope that clay is what they need they're arguably if clay comes back and is 80 90 percent of what he was the championship favorites and that includes potentially james wiseman coming back that includes all the young guys they have and that does not include a possible trade and so ultimately I, I don't think they're going to do anything drastic. If I had to guess, I don't think they make a move for Ben Simmons or any of the other stars that are on the on the table. And that's that's really the reason why I think that is because I struggle to think of anybody else that they would trade for. Dame's not out there. Bradley Beal's not out there. Ben Simmons is, but he's not a good fit. I, I, I just I don't see it for Golden State. I don't see a, a path this year that leads them to being better so much so in the short term that necessitates them giving up all of that long-term stuff that they have. If there was a way more obvious, you know, big time wing to trade for, I'd be more willing to, to kind of take that into consideration. But ultimately, I think, I mean, they might make a move. They might add a veteran here, buy out whatever the case may be. But in terms of like big, big trade stuff, the Warriors, along with probably most of the league, aren't going to be doing much. Next up. Ben Simmons. You know, we had to talk about it. We're not going to get through the whole video without talking about him. I do think he's going to get moved. I don't think there's any real way that Philly can look at their team and look at the season that Joel Embiid is having and think, you know what? We're good. We don't need to replace Ben Simmons' value. We've got Seth Curry and Tyrese Maxey. I, I can't imagine that's the conclusion that they come to. No disrespect to Seth Curry. No disrespect to Tyrese Maxey, but they are a dramatically more dangerous team in the postseason even if you just swap out Ben for CJ McCollum or a variety of different teams, right? They are so, so much more dangerous when you add that. It, it's actually kind of crazy how good they still are even without Simmons out there. But given the history of big guys in terms of injuries, they can fall off a cliff. Like Embiid's having an awesome season and next year he could have an injury fall off a cliff and never be remotely the same guy. I don't want that to happen, but it's part of the calculation is that you are relying on this other guy who is playing a position that notoriously is injury riddled and things can fall apart really, really quickly. It's a problem. So I, I just, I can't imagine that he doesn't get moved somewhere. Now, in terms of where, I'm going to give my top three, but I mean, it's anybody's guess at this point, right? Cleveland, I think is interesting. Um, they're obviously having a ton of success this year. I, 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 I don't even know what the trade would be. I, I really don't. I think if Colin Sexton was healthy, I think there's something there with like Kyle and Sexton, Kevin Love and some stuff for Simmons. It's just it's just a feeling. It's some rumors and some news and stuff that I've seen where like Cleveland could position themselves to continue to add to what's been a really interesting group to begin this season. Got to keep an eye on or team to keep an eye on, I should say. Sacramento is in California, which reportedly is where Ben Simmons wants to go. Uh, there's pieces there. De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, uh, Tyrese Halbert and Davion Mitchell. There's pieces there that make sense. In Philadelphia, absolutely a team that I could see making a move for Simmons in terms of improving uh, their outlook moving forward. And then Portland, who has to continue to be mentioned because one of the cleanest Ben Simmons trades out there is Simmons, CJ, flip them, add whatever stuff on the perimeter of that you want to, but that's the core of the deal. And there's a lot of stuff there that I think makes a lot of sense. Again, it's kind of impossible to, to legitimately predict that, but I do my best. Next up. 
We've got two teams to finish out the video. The first up is Dallas. Dallas is a, is a really weird team to figure out. I wasn't super optimistic about them coming into the season strictly because I just don't think Jason Kidd is a very good head coach. And whatever they were going to try and do with Chris Saps Porzingis, I wasn't optimistic that it was going to work. At certain points this year, it has. But they're still clearly not in... The, I, I don't even see them as like in the second tier of contenders in the West. And so they're, they're still pretty far away from being like a true, true championship contender. And as a result, I do expect them to do something. Like there, there there's like there's a Tim Hardaway, maybe Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Kleber. There's something there. I, I would anticipate, unless something dramatic changes, that KP is going to stay. But my, my official prediction for Dallas is that they're going to do something significant. They're going to shake up the roster in a real way. But that in a way that does not involve Chris Asperzingis and, of course, does not involve Luka either. I think they're a really interesting Simmons destination. I just don't know how they do it because like KP is just not a fit in Philly. So unless you're sending KP somewhere else, maybe there's a three team or a four team trade there that works. But I just I, I just think about Dallas as a team that feels like they need a shakeup, feels like they need a little bit of a jolt, but I don't anticipate it involving KP or of course Luca. And then last up on the list, potentially the most fun NBA trade deadline team of the year. It's the LA Lakers. So what I have as my official prediction is that they're going to try to do something and ultimately fail to do so. Now, that that doesn't include like a random veteran that they trade for, buyout guys, whatever the case may be. That is specifically to trying to legitimately add a real piece to this group, whether it be a Russell Westbrook trade, whether it be trying to bring, bring in Miles Turner for Taylor Horton Tucker and a bunch of other stuff. No, I've, I've, I'll admit, I've been wrong about this before. I didn't think that logistically they were going to make the Westbrook trade. I thought it made way more sense to get Buddy healed. I was like, I see these Westbrook rumors. I don't believe them. I don't think it's a real thing. And maybe, maybe I'm going to be wrong about that again. I've been wrong about Westbrook a few times in terms of how impossible it would be for him to be traded. He's been traded twice since I kind of made that statement. But for this Lakers team specifically, they're in, a, they're in a much different situation than Houston was when they traded Russ or Washington was when they traded Russ. They were looking to get role players. They were just looking to get out of the money. They weren't looking to be a, a championship contender. And the Lakers are. And they don't like they don't have any, any options, any moves outside of Russ. And I'm not sure they have the assets to attach to him to really get something out of him in exchange. And so ultimately, I absolutely expect them to take some chances with Russ and try and make something work. But I can't imagine it's actually going to. And that leads me to my last kind of bonus prediction here to finish out the video. And that is, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be that active of a deadline. I, I, I would almost guarantee that Simmons is going to get moved. And I'm not confident about anything else significant. We've we've had a couple of years here now of like we know who the main players are at the deadline and we expect them to be moved. And Simmons is pretty much the only guy on that list this year. And we, we can always be surprised. It happens all the time. I remember when the D'Lo trade happened, none of us really expected that one to go down. And that was supposed to be a pretty quiet deadline. Then all of a sudden everything went crazy. Maybe that's what happens this year. But that's really my overarching like bonus prediction is it's probably going to be a pretty quiet deadline. Um, like, I, I expect guys like, you know, Terrence Ross to be shopped, Yusuf Nurkic to be shopped. But most of the deals that happen this year are going to be on that kind of level, where Milwaukee's trading for P.J. Tucker or something last year, Evan Fournier getting moved to Boston, or Aaron Gordon getting moved to Denver. Those kinds of things are really more so what I'm expecting this year. In addition to Simmons, rather than like all-stars being thrown all over the place throughout the league. It's unfortunate. Like, I'm sad even just saying it because I want all this player movement. It's really, really fun for me. Uh, but ultimately, that's kind of where I've landed at uh, with the predictions for the trade deadline. Let me know down in the comment section below your one number one biggest prediction for the trade deadline this year. And that is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, be sure to check out the boxes on screen and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one every single day. With those things said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Once again, my name is Tucker, and I will see you all next time.